some combustibles down a toilet, you know, bug spray, gasoline. There's a number of different rare variations on this myth. At which point her husband comes into the bathroom, sits down, has a cigarette, puts the cigarette out between his legs into the toilet, and it explodes, burning his sensitive parts. Good. That sounds like a perfect job for the blast chamber. It should be easy for the Mythbusters to get this one in the can. All they have to do is buy a toilet, dump a range of combustible materials into it, drop in a lit cigarette, and watch the fireworks. Uh, I'm trying to think of various ways that we can actually make that toilet blow up. And, uh, you know, maybe the gasoline or maybe the bug spray will do it. But if not, you know, there are other things that we can put in there. Like yeah. a grand finale? Yeah. One way or another, we're going to blow up that damn toilet. Okay, good. First step, down to the local junkyard on the lookout for a toilet. Now, you'd imagine that most toilets are pretty much the same. But Jamie's being fussy. Well, there's less water in the in the, in the, in the closet. This one's too shallow. The explosive we're going to put in here is heavier than air, so it's going to rest in the uh, rest in the bowl. The deeper the bowl, the more explosive force we get, the better the result. Forty bucks later, Adam and Jamie have their toilet. Folklorist Heather Joseph Witham has seen enough exploding toilet stories to fill a small outhouse. This narrative has been around at least since the 1930s, at which point it appeared in news clippings and newspapers. The early form of the story was probably some sort of rural gag. You have the wife of the house going and cleaning out the outhouse with some kind of kerosene or oil or other kind of volatile fluid, at which point the grandpa goes out and sits down and lights his pipe, and he gets blown right off the outhouse seat. And uh, as he's lying there amidst the rubble, he says, it must have been something I ate. The bottom line is, Jamie plans to be sitting on the toilet when it goes up. So he'll need more than his trusty beret. He's measuring himself for a purpose-built protective suit made from football equipment and impact-resistant foam padding. Ow! And if that toilet's supposed to launch me across the room, then, uh, you know, it'd be kind of nice to have this. It's not long, though, before Jamie changes his mind about taking one for the team. After all this armor... And your big costume, you don't want to sit on the toilet anymore. Why not? Well, that foam, you know, that impact foam burned kind of like napalm. And uh, after a lot of thought about it, I'm more concerned about getting torched than I am about getting blown across the room. I had a suspicion you might uh, wuss out on this uh, armor thing. So I've actually been making some calls, and I might have a very, very acceptable plan B. Ding, you got it. Oh, what a touch. <laughs> In this box right here is the new star of Mythbusters. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's all I need is another dummy around this place. <laughs> Weighing in at 180 pounds, this Series 2 crash test dummy retired in 1998. Making quite an impact in his chosen profession. Oh, this is pretty cool. Oh. What part of the body is that this? That would be the, uh, uh goes into Oh, that's the stomach. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. This is like a giant-sized G.I. Joe. But if it's the quiet life he's after, right. he's a bigger dummy than he looks. He's not going to upstage us. We're just kicking back into submission. <laughs> All he needs now is a name. <laughs> I think we should call him Buster. Buster sounds pretty good to me. It's kind of manly, a little pretty descriptive. It doesn't have any ears. The next step, Jamie has to build a remote-controlled hand to drop the cigarette. That's probably the best thing. <laughs> okay. Adam and Jamie have also had to build their very own blast chamber. It's made from a bulletproof material called Lexan, the same substance used in aircraft windows. Hopefully, it will survive its maiden voyage. On its first outing, the blast chamber is doubling as the world's most public bathroom. Like an hourglass, the sands of time. Moving inexorably towards toilet explosion. 
Inside, a high-speed camera has its BDI trained on the ball. It's running at 1,000 frames per second, 40 times faster than the average camcorder. The more frames exposed, the slower the picture. Normal camera, high-speed camera. The temperature inside the chamber is already climbing. The hotter it is, the easier it should be to ignite the fuel. While the chamber should easily contain any explosion, the Mythbusters have called for backup, just in case. Have you never you never heard this myth before? Uh, no, actually, I haven't heard this one. Found a few people uh, on the toilet, but never because of a toilet explosion. Falling off the toilet. A lot of bathroom like that, yeah. problems. Falling off the toilet. Never actually exploding. <laughs> The local fire marshal's on hand to oversee proceedings. So we've uh, designed this with, uh, you know, it's covered with polycarbonate that won't shatter, go anywhere. It's securely bolted as well as it's made in two separate halves so that if there is any kind of general explosion in there, it'll just open. Is there that much of a difference between, uh, you know, like a coal or an ember dropping into a propellant and an actual lit flame? It depends on how much surface area you have on that coal. So it will, a coal can light, like a cigarette Absolutely. butt. Absolutely, smoldering, yes. Combustible number one. Mythbusters hairspray. It's what I use to keep my dew in line. How much of this stuff am I supposed to put in there? The myth said that the, uh, that the can of propellant got stuck open. So not knowing what to do with it, she emptied it out of the toilet. So I put a whole bunch in there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. You know, when you start to get dizzy, it's probably time to leave. Okay. A sensor measures the level of flammable vapor inside the chamber. <laughs> Would seem we have some combustible gases in here. We're more than ready for ignition. Come on, say something cool. Release mechanism dropping by. That's it. Okay, three, two, one, go. Nothing. Not exactly hair raising stuff. So, uh, well, time to move on to the next test bug spray. It seems the smoldering tip of the cigarette is not producing enough heat to reach the flash point of the hydrocarbons. I mean, we're totally duplicating the circumstances of the myth. Uh, lit cigarette, bug spray, it's not like anyone tried to re reach an ideal air fuel mixture. Bug spray and hairspray aren't the most flammable things in the world. And uh, also, you know, it's a cigarette with a coal on it. It's, it's, uh, it'd be better to have a nice open flame to it. It's time to move outside the confines of the myth and see if a naked flame can spark some life. More bug spray. If it doesn't do it on this one, I don't think it's happening. We still got a few more things to try though, so be patient. All right. All right. This time, Jamie's getting it both barrels. The sensor's squealing. Okay, here goes. There, go. Did it go in the toilet? It did, and there was actually a little poof in the toilet. Well, hardly 4th of July. Poof. We have poof. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Time for butane to step up to the plate. Did it go in? It went right in. Nothing happened. All right, match. Lighting. Let's go. There's a poof. <laughs> Finally. That is not enough to blast somebody off the seat. You don't think so? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. The Mythbusters are struggling to make the exploding toilet myth anything more than a flash in the pan. But this isn't the first time someone has put this story to the test. Dr. Robert Slay first heard about the exploding toilet myth in the mid-70s. Intrigued, he conducted his own myth-busting experiment. I myself in Texas in investigating this with a large watermelon, and a full can of spray was only able to singe the bottom of the watermelon, not to have it leave the toilet. Dr. Slay says these stories are invaluable.
in a field where every day is a matter of life and death. I think they're therapeutic in the sense that it relieves stress. We know that um, humor used appropriately, particularly in tense work situations, tends to make people perform better. As you may well know, there are studies that show that people are more creative. They think of better solutions when they're working in what they call a fun environment or a place where there can be humor. Undeterred, Adam and Jamie head back to detonate this toilet. The, the myth is looking kind of unlikely at the moment, although, uh, you know, gasoline is the big one. What do you think? Does that work? Oh, that's beautiful. Surely, dropping a cigarette into a pool of gasoline will produce some type of reaction. It's got a wet towel ready in case the extinguisher fails. Silly housewife pouring gasoline down the toilet. Are you ready? I'm ready. Lighting cigarette. Okay, I'm gonna drop it. Three, two, one, go. Nada. But the pool of All liquid right. simply put the cigarette out. Try again, this time using the naked flame of the match. Let go. Okay, so you get a shock and a blackened backside, but it's still not the explosive force mentioned in the myth. So do you think that was enough to uh, blow you off the toilet? No way. No way. It wasn't really like a concussive blast. I mean, it didn't, you know, I didn't see the chamber move very much at all. Finally, the moment the Mythbusters have been sweating on, okay. it's time for Solution X, <laughs> gunpowder. We have this black powder that, like, there's a, actually almost a full can of this. You think you, think you could let us put it in the toilet and set it off? So go ahead, try a capful in a metal container and see what we get out of okay. it. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. So that made a nice woof, actually. Yeah, it did make a very nice woof. I saw a movie like this once. <laughs> The fire marshal seems to be getting a little nervous. How much? I put it all in there. <laughs> That's too much. Half of it? That's a hell of a lot. Should give you one hell of an effect. Chamber is sealed. Are we good to go? Yep. Ready. Go. Well, I tell I tell you what, you know that, <laughs> that, that was uh, great. It didn't even move him. No, he didn't even move. It did blow his pants up, though. <laughs> He's still holding the cigarette. <laughs> that was fun. Congratulations. Not even half a tin of gunpowder could unseat our new star. If anything, it just enhanced his smoldering good looks. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I've had days just like this, too. Another myth busted. Jamie and Adam are flush with success. <laughs> this, is, this is perfect amount of carnage. And what about their new co-star? I think you work fantastically. Uh, in fact, we were able to set fire to his clothes, and he doesn't seem any the worse for wear. I mean, he smells a little bit, but uh, I think he did fantastically.